Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So here we are. Um, we made it alive. We made it through another uh, weekend. And in my personal opinion, it was basically one of my very best weekends so far. Um, so yeah. And uh, welcome to another week, which is going to be sadly, once again, basically the last uh, for this module. We'll see how it goes, because uh, if you remember, last month we said, or I mean, I said at least, that I thought it was going to be very hard to like see you guys, guys again or like meet with you again. But here we are, you know, once again, working together. So we'll see how it goes this time around. Uh, but yeah, so far, uh, it has been, as I always, a very good experience. I have enjoyed myself very, very much, um, you know, working with you now. There is one question, I mean, a few questions that I have for you tonight. I want to talk about something that has to do with vocabulary. It's mostly about vocabulary and reading. So you're going to have your chance, you know, to go ahead and read. Um, but the question that I have is, how much do you know about false cognates? Because if you don't know much, I want you to do a little bit of research tonight. Because I want you to like, you know, go ahead and like start doing those searches and start gathering information on your own. And uh, yeah, I want to know how much do you guys know the topic of false cognates? And uh, does it sound familiar? Have you ever heard about it? Have you ever learned about it? Um, how do you feel about that? Do you have any idea of what false cognates are? Uh, I would like to start hearing maybe from Imelda. Do you know what are the false cognates? Could you please repeat the, the question? Um, do you know what are false cognates? Wait, I don't I'll, understand. I'll send it on the chat. False cognates. You can you can read it on the chat. Have you ever heard about that? Have you ever learned about that? False cognate. Uh, mm -hmm. the first time that I read it. Oh, okay. I um, how about in the case of um, Lorena? How about you? Do you know anything about false cognates? No, no, I don't you have any. All no, right. I don't. So tonight, I want, um, well, I want you, I want us to learn about them. I want to share with you a tiny piece of information that I have. I don't have many. I only have a few of them, but I want to share some of the false cognates that I have, and then when we're done with it. I will send you guys on the search for more false cognates. Um, so tonight we're gonna be uh making couples because I want us I want us to work you know like that in 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 smaller groups. Um, sorry, we're gonna be divided as we did last time, but this time it's gonna be with a a different um objective, which is to find more false cognates. Because as I said, we only have a few, or I only have a few. Um, already understood, understood. Okay, uh, so I only have a few false cognates, but it's a topic that I find very interesting and that I think that if you go ahead and search on it and learn from it on your own and then come and share with the class, it is going to feel very, very nice because in my opinion, it's, you know, you know, just one of those, one of those topics that are just, um, very nice to like to like have um as a student or things that are great to learn as a student. Now, just so you know, or I don't know if you guys knew anything about it, but English is a mixture of many languages. One of those languages is pretty obvious. It's Spanish. Spanish has a lot to do with English. It is said that during the Shakespearean era, era, sorry, the Shakespearean era, when Shakespeare was like the biggest writer in the um United Kingdom. He and some other writers from the UK they started reading Spanish literature. So they just started seeing how Spanish was like a huge language already. And they felt like English was lacking a lot of definitions. There was a lot of words that English didn't have. So what they did is that they started gathering words from all the other languages. They started gathering words from French. They started gathering words from uh, Spanish and some words from German. So what that did is that at the end, it created a language that has many roots in many other languages. Spanish being the biggest, kinda, but 
they have many other languages that they also have as a root or as a source for vocabulary. Now, here I have, as I have been saying, a few words that come from English, but that are very similar to words in Spanish, but they do not mean the same at all. So the words that I have over here are embarrassed, exit, molest, constipation. Oh, wait, this one is not valid. Um, fabric, soap, realize, pie, introduce, record, rope, and actual. So I know that as soon as you see these words, you have an idea of what they can mean. For example, the word embarrassed. What's wait, but what's the word in Spanish that you think embarrassed can be similar to? Yeah, it's like it's like uh, no, con la, con ya sabemos. Pensemos con lo que se parece. La idea de los postcognates son palabras que vienen de otro idioma, pero que el significado es completamente diferente. Y eso es lo que quiero que entendamos ah, hoy en la noche. Oh, I got it. I got okay. it. Yeah. Okay, so embarrassed parece embarazada. Sí, that's the word that it's similar to. Oh, yes, Leslie. Um, the word um, isolation, que significa eh, eh, aislarse, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. En inglés. Yes, in Spanish suena como insolación. Como insolación, como... ajá. Yeah, that's another one. Pero igual, ah. guárdenlas, que más adelante las van a, van a compartir ustedes. Sí. Ok. okay. Ah, cero, cero, por Dios. <risa> bueno. <risa> <risa> ya vamos a comentar eso después. Sí. I know, I know. Gee. Bueno, a ver. Uh, exit, sí. Exit, ¿a qué palabra exit. creen ustedes? Or like, to what words does it look similar to in Spanish? Exit. Éxito, yes. Éxito, you know, exit looks a lot like éxito. Now, how about molest? Molestar. Molesto. Molestar o molesto, también, exacto. Molestar o molesto. Ahora, I want to know. Esta es una palabra bien compleja. Eso sí, es una palabra bien complicada y debemos ser muy cuidadosos cuando lo usamos. Do you guys have any idea of what's the actual meaning of molest in Spanish? Alguna... No, no saben qué significa. Okay. Nice. Well, when someone is is like uh, doing things that I don't like, um, like could be like spoken like like making, uh, doing things uh, that I I don't know to when you are a child like uh, to pull the hair or to uh, I don't know that that's like annoying. I, yeah. I... That, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's annoying. Uh, molest, it's way more darker, okay? Molest is a very, very dark word. And it's a word that, as I said, you have you guys have to be very careful when you use it. Because molest basically is abuse, see? Molest is when you touch someone with bad intentions, okay? It's not simply just like pulling the hair or things like those. It's, oh. it's like, you know, going and touching someone with bad intentions, all right? Oh. So molest is uh, abusar. Básicamente. Sí. So a molester mm -hmm. is a person that has to, um, you know, that has to go uh, basically to um, to jail. Bad intention. Yeah, and they have to go to jail. Someone who is proven to be a molester is someone who ends up in jail. Because, yeah, molesting is not the same. O sea, molestar en español sí va. O sea, molestar así como estás fregando, que estás tocando, que estás diciéndole bromas, que no sé qué, que no sé cuánto. Yeah, that's in Spanish. But in English, molest es propasarse, es cuando ustedes son mano larga, sí, so yeah, that's molest. How about fabric? What is fabric or what word does it resemble in Spanish? Fabrica. Fabrica. Ajá, uh -huh, fabrica. And do you guys know the meaning of fabric? Ah, seems like no, so I come with new information here. So fabric, <laughs> fabric is, <laughs> yes? Es tela. Tela, yes, there we go. Thank you, Luis. Yes, so fabric looks like fabrica, sounds like fabrica, but it's actually tela. How about soap? To what word in Spanish does it look similar to? Sopa. Sopa, very good. But soap, I know that you guys know what's the meaning of soap, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's jabón. So very good. How about realize? What's the word that realize looks like? Realizado. Realizar. Realizar, realizado. And realize, do you know what it means? 
But it actually darse means... cuenta de algo. Ajá, uh -huh, darse cuenta. Very good. Um, how about pi? <laughs> well, this one yeah. doesn't sound. Yeah, it lo it basically looks like a word. So yeah, and you we already know that uh pie it's like a tarta or like a, a, a pastel. Popo. Yeah, it's like a tarta or pastel. So yeah, it's kind of easy. How about introduce? What's the word that introduce can look like in Spanish? Introducir. Introducir. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, introducir. However, the actual meaning of introduce is presentar. See, when we have two people who don't know one another and we introduce them, like we make them, you know, get to know one another. And this actually reminds me of one of my favorite songs of all time, Introducing Me from, uh, it was Nick. Yeah, I think it was Nick Jonas. But yeah, introduce. <laughs> it's like the same thing. Hola? It's like the same thing. I, I thought as, aha, hasta cierto punto. It can be understood as you know, like putting something inside something. And that's why yeah. when, when I go ahead and like clarify the whole meaning of the word, like introducir, I will say that in English is insert, you know, when you put something inside other something or someone yeah. inside inside other thing. Uh, but yeah. Uh how about uh record? What's the word that um it can resemble in Spanish? Like a, a record. Record. Like uh, a record? Okay, yeah. A record or or maybe also Acabar. recordar. Yeah. Record. Someone can confuse it as recordar. But rec record, it actually means grabar. Or like, did grabar. you guys knew that? Because yeah, record is uh with grabar. There yeah, grabar. Mm -hmm. So record, you know, it's a... It's a word that has been around for a long, a long, long time because it's like it was... when they start. It's like when they start the 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 class says recording, recording. in progress. Uh -huh. Recording in progress. Yeah, as soon as I log in, it's like recording in progress. Teacher. Yes. But that is record is only for music or any. No. It is also for, and I was I was about to mention this is a word that has been around for a long time because it was even in BZRs. If you guys ever used BCRs, the BCR had a button, a red tiny button, like a circle, and that was the record button. So you were able to tape or record video from the from the TV to a you know like a cassette thing, um, and you will be able to play it afterwards. So yeah, record works with um with music. It works with like regular audio. Like if for example you go to an interview, um, and you want to like tape what someone is saying. Um, you can record them, you know, of course you will have to ask for permission and all that. Uh, but yeah, you can record, you know, like a conversation here is as email that just mentioned as well, we are recording the class. So it's, you know, it's not only for, uh, for music. However, the pronunciation is different because when you talk about music, music, it said, uh, you normally say it as we refer in Spanish to the records. So yeah, you will say record. It's not the same. You know, when you talk about the, the verb, for um like taping something that's record but when you talk about the music like the um the tape or the, the actual thing um the actual cassette that's a record entonces es diferente sí record sería para la acción digamos de grabar y el record cuando se trata ya de la música ya como la la la, la pista o que ya está grabada ese se dice record así que se suena diferente casi como el record como les decía en español so yeah Sí, y si queremos grabar algo en piedra, por ejemplo. Uh, le... No, that would be... Uh, it's setting. I think it's setting. Setting on stone. Because there is even an idiom that is, it, it's not set on stone. So I think it's setting. On a stone is... Oh, engrave. Engrave, that's the word. Engrave. Engrave. Mm -hmm. Engrave. Okay. Mm -hmm. Engrave. That's the word that we use when we talk about stone and wood. So if you like want to like, you know, um, like uh, engrave or, or like uh, leave some letters on stone or on wood, you will have to use the word engrave. So that's engraving on uh, stone or wood. All right. Uh, how about the word rope? What's what do you think the word rope looks similar to in Spanish? Ropa. Mm -hmm. Ropa. And what's the meaning of the word rope? Cuerda, cuerda, soga. Uh -huh. Cuerda, or lazo, 
or soga. Ooh, well, all those. So yeah, I had a doubt. I don't know if you guys know, because this is an actual doubt of mine. Um, soga, is it with D or with S? With S. Yes. Is it with S? Okay. So yeah, because I, I, I typed it down with S once before. I remember that, you know, like a while ago, I typed it down with S, but I didn't remember. That's why I prefer to use Lazo, because with Lazo, I'm sure that is with a Z. But with uh, Soga, I'm not sure. I wasn't sure. And uh, yeah, I was like, ah, I don't remember right now. Okay, how about actual? This is one of those, what is, I mean, I'm sorry that I'm taking it away from you because as I said, in a minute, you guys are going to go and, uh, you know, start um, start looking for, for your own words. But actual, what's the word that it looks similar to in Spanish? Real. Basically lo mismo, sí, actual. So actual looks a lot like the word actual. Wait, no, actual, no, actual, actual, there we go. So, actual in English, actual in Spanish. But the meaning of actual is uh, like, mm, what you might call it? It would be like real, see? As for example, when you say my actual job, like mi trabajo real o de veras, as Naruto, de veras, you know? It's like my actual, see, como mi, mi, like my actual, um, actual friend, mi amigo de veras o mi amigo de verdad. Eh, y esta, normalmente, esta es la cosa que me gusta siempre explicar con esta palabra, porque yo sé que muchos tal vez la conocen, pero algunos otros no. Eh, esta palabra tiende a confundir mucho, mucho a las personas cuando estamos aprendiendo inglés, porque nosotros queremos explicar cosas que hacemos en la actualidad con la palabra actually. Sí, y el significado de actually no podría estar más lejos de eh, significar actualmente. Sí, actually significa de hecho o en realidad. Esos son los dos significados que podríamos utilizar para la palabra actually. En cambio, la palabra actual en inglés se diría current. Sí, current that I know it's it's weird, you know, because normally we see current as like a flow of something. That's like the normal way of seeing what a current is, but it is current. See, so if you want to talk, for example, about um, the job that you have at the moment is not my actual job. When you say my actual job, what you're saying is mi trabajo o mi, mi trabajo real, mi trabajo de verdad. But when you're wanting to talk about that, about something that you have at the moment, you will have to say my current job. So that would mean mi trabajo actual. So my current job. If, for example, um, you say that uh, you are currently learning English, that is a fact. However, if you say that you're actually learning English, that is also a fact, but in a different way. Because if you say that you're actually doing it, it's because, well, you are at uh, the classes and all, but it's not a progress that you are having, for example. It's not that you're explaining that you're having a progress. Using the word actually in a sentence like that would be basically us stating that it's a true fact it's something that is real and that you have proof of it if you say that you're actually learning english you know it's like i have proof that i'm learning um but if you share if you say that i'm currently learning english that would say that or mean that it's a process that you're following that you are doing this at the moment you know it's something that you are developing on so yeah ahora bien so here comes the boom no here comes direct the, the the um the challenge that i have for you guys tonight I want you to, or I mean, we're going to be getting divided. I, we have 11 people. Um, there's one of us who is actually busy right now. So there's one. There's going to be one group that will have three people uh, because uh, Elizabeth has already requested permission. She says she's um, on traffic, she's, so she will not be working. However, she will be, you know, as a listener with a couple. I'm going to send you guys in couples to breakout rooms where you can gather a minimum of five false cognates extra of course false cognates and i want you to go ahead and grab the false cognate grab the word that it looks similar to in spanish and its actual meaning also uh, try to type down one sentence with each so once again grab the false cognate bueno se los digo en español vamos a ir a hacer una investigación en parejas sí en parejas nos vamos a dividir y vamos a buscar Cinco cognados falsos más. Aparte de los que tenemos aquí, vamos a buscar cinco más. Las parejas van a ser asignadas de forma aleatoria. So, please don't, um, don't rush. 
Um, vamos a buscar cinco más. Tenemos que traer el cognado, sí, el false cognate. No importa si se repiten, that's okay, because we're simply going to be sharing. So the false cognate, we're going to have um, the word o la palabra a la que se parece en español, al menos la que encontramos, ¿verdad? Que se parezca en español. And we're also going to have to bring um, its actual meaning, o sea, el, el significado real de la palabra en español. Y por último, un ejemplo donde lo estemos utilizando con el significado real. Así, con el significado real. Entonces, el ejemplo debería ser en inglés, no necesariamente debería ser. Um... Uh, ok, so we have two people who are busy right now. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put these two people at the same group. Sí, eso sí, lo único que voy a editar entonces. Voy a poner a estas dos personas que están ahorita eh, ocupadas en el mismo grupo. Y, o sea, con otras dos personas, ¿verdad? Ya les voy a decir cuando estemos en los grupos quiénes son o dónde queden las otras dos personas, quiénes serán los que estén ocupados. So, um, yeah, any questions you guys have? ¿Alguna duda que tengan acerca de lo que vamos a trabajar ahorita? No. No? Ok. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and create the groups, I think. It's, yeah, it's only going to be four. All right, so. Let's get into the groups. Uh, let's try to get, as I said, fast by post Um, the meaning, I mean, the, the word that they look like, the meaning in Spanish, and the examples for each. It's not too much, I think. So let's go ahead and work on it. So the, the color and red, the thing that uh, the people in uh, I tengo and I have a red, it's mean that compares. But in English, have a rest. we say subtract, restar, cuando uno, eh, alguna mm -hmm. ecuación, por decirlo así. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have this. You have many. <laughs> I don't have any. Okay, we need so five. In this group, um, Rosa will be supposed to work. Sandra is at the office. So Sandra will not be um, supposed to work. So you guys are three working people and one who is simply an attendee. Okay. Already. Oh, oh yeah. I thought that we are only two. <laughs> well. We were supposed to be, but uh, there were two people who were not joining the groups, so I decided to assign them, you know, because maybe they were busy doing something else. So yeah, but it's still, okay. it, we can make it, we can make it work. Okay, maybe an example of this sentence can be: We need rest of Sunday. Not rest means descansar. Okay, as I said before, I think if. I would think date is, is like dato. For me, date, dato. No, es que date in English, we can use, in English is, is usually used for a date with a person, a couple person that have a... Yeah, but... Una, una cita. 
Ajá, uh -huh, that's that's why in or, or date date uh, the fecha. Or date the fecha, but we are talking about fal false cornet, and then could be date datum. I don't yes. know. Yeah, that's right. Then uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here comes the. <laughs> yeah, thanks. You can. Yeah, but yeah, date can be used or can be can be confused with dato. It's one of the the main words that date can be confused with in Spanish. So yes, mm, okay. and as Luis was saying, date is normally referred to you know as um meeting someone or going out with someone, or as you were saying, it can also be used to refer to on a specific um day. Like for example, uh today was a special like date in the U.S. because it was uh it was Labor Day. And you know, uh -huh, okay. it's like a, a holiday thing. Uh, so yeah, they also could refer to it as a date. But the main, the main, 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 main thing that date refers to is um meeting with someone or like going out with someone. Así que, yeah, that would be like the meaning, you know, in Spanish, salir con alguien. Aquí ayudándoles. I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm just trying. You know, I get I get bored when I'm when I'm alone. Yeah, you need to talk. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, and with another one could be turtle and tortola. Good one. Which? Turtle, tortuga, turtle. Yes. Uh, okay, I will do the second one. Red. If you have the next one, uh, you might. How come? I see variantes. Ah, yeah. Hi. Relative. Right. Um, for example, actuality. Actuality. Uh, at present, actual. She's actually not the manager. Um, to a baby, to warp, and they, they are, um, they're, they're not, not need to a baby, I go, why? Let's see. How many do we have? I have involved. Uh huh. Which sounds like envolver, I think. But it's involucrado. Uh huh. Good. That's nice. That's a good one. Involved. Mm -hmm. Sale. Which one? Sale. Oh, yeah. Like salir, uh -huh. but venta. Oh, sale. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sale. Uh -huh. Oh, I thought you were saying sale, like as when you're like on the sea, like sailing on the sea. La de no, navegar. Sale. Navegar, uh -huh. sale. It's my bad. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, it's like I, 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 I thought that, you know, Yo me quedé, ah, qué palabra más rebuscada. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't have to worry. <laughs> so, uh, uh -huh. Imelda. Groceries. Uh, yes. Groceries. Oh, yeah, groceries. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a very good one. So, I was meaning to ask you, Imelda, have you ever been treasoned? Imelda, have you ever been treasoned? Treasoned? Yes. What is that? Have you ever been lied to then? Have you ever been lied to? Because I was lied to last Friday. Because a little someone around there was telling me that, yeah, we're going to meet up and all that. And she never showed up. Hey, Leslie, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm doing that. I'm, I'm talking about you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tell me. I'm talking about you because you, you never showed up. ¿Sabes qué? Mi novia se quedó y tu amigo de piedras iba a venir. 
Y yo, los dejo plantados, amor. No, Nos traicionó. no fue así. No fue así, es que no. O sea, si no entraba la mentira ya, sí. jamás iba a pasar. ¿Sabes qué? A mí y te anduve me pasó, buscando. A mí me pasó la cosa más loca de la vida con unas muchachas ahí. Les, vendí, les, les vendimos a cinco dólares que se colaran. O sea, yo no quería, conste. Ninguno de nosotros quería. Pero es que ella, ella llegó una y llegó nada más. Y se nos acercó. O sea, casi como se andaba ofreciendo drogas o qué sé yo. Pero así bien, o sea, bien en secreto. Como, oigan, amigos. ¿Ustedes dos vienen juntos? Y yo como, y mi, o sea, bien cerquita de mi novia. Ya, ah, pues yo mi novia, sí. Les pago cinco dólares y dejan que nos colemos mi amiga y yo. Y yo como, ¿qué? Bien, les voy a cobrar. No, no hombre, yo, 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 yo acabo de decirle, yo, pues, no hay problema, colate. Ah, pues entonces, y ajá, ¿verdad? bueno, pero la chamaca se fue y regresa como a los 10 minutos. Hola, amigos, aquí estamos, este, ellas dos son. Y yo como, no la hagas tan obvio, güey, solo metete. Ah, pues, y ya, o sea, la chamaca era como que qué. Y luego se pone con este, amiga, y le dice a mi novia, o sea, mete un número para pasarte el dinero. Ah, pues mi novia, no, dale con él, le dijo. Y yo como, ¿qué? Así que, ajá. Pero les juro que yo me quedé como de verdad. Y más que lo más gracioso es que al final, adelante, nosotros estábamos en el concierto y yo como, no puede ser, qué desgraciadas. Venían atrás y ya terminaron, terminaron, miren, se terminaron colando un montón porque, o sea, ya llegaron a estar casi enfrente del artista y yo como, no manchen. Así que, ajá, a saber cuánto, sí, a saber cuánto más terminaron pagando más adelante. A todo el mundo le iban pagando quizás ahí para adelante. <risa> Pues fíjate que alguna persona sí pudo estar a la par de él. Ah, bueno, antes de eso, porque se me olvidó. Voy a poner en el chat las, las oraciones que hice con las palabras que encontré. Sí, bueno. Para que la vean. Este, eh, una chera logró tomar sus fotos con él y autógrafo. Pero yo creo que ella sí. tenía cuello ahí adentro porque sí, fijo. Eh, la ropa era igual a la que tenía Sidarto. O sea, como ella sabía que su outfit combinaba con... Ajá, la ropa que él. Ahí. Sí. Ajá. Era familia y... quizás de alguno de los organizadores o algo así. Ya la rieron. Porque sí, eso de tus shows, o sea, yo trabajé con ellos y son bien hechos leña. <ríe> Entonces pues, no te dan beneficio. Si sí, trabajaste con ellos, ayúdame a conseguir los de los temerarios. No, eso te iba a decir que yo que trabajé con ellos, no, o sea, ellos no te dan nada. Es más, se los explotan. Los que estaban ahí de Simmer Down, de... De, de la cerveza ultra, todos Ajá. ellos les pagan el mínimo. No sé si me fijé que esos chamacos andaban también con todo ahí mojándose y todo. Sí, yo estuve para los Juegos Centroamericanos Ajá. y eh, a mí me pagaban, pero por día, eran 30 dólares el día. O sea, salía bien y trabajé creo que 5 o 8 días. Ajá. Pero, pero, o sea, es diferente porque yo fui jefa. Pero ellos que están ahí, no, o sea, los sobreexplotan. Y nos íbamos bien tarde, si yo todos los días salía a la una. Y mojada, así como Ay, aquel día. No. Ajá. <ríe> Horrible. No, pero ese día valió la pena. Ay, sí. Mi novia se quería venir como a las 8, que no entrábamos ni nada. Y me decía, yo no sé qué hago aquí, yo me voy a enfermar. Ah, pues ya le dolía la espalda, nos dolían los pies, nos dolía todo. Ah, pues y cuando estábamos esperando, ¿verdad? Cuando eran las 9 y 20 y no salía, era como que, ¿y qué hacemos aquí? Le dije, oh, vámonos. <ríe> pues en eso. O sea, broma, va. Pero cuando sí. salió, cuando salió, te juro que eso no fue todo. O sea, los dolores de espalda, los dolores de, de cabeza que yo andaba, todo, todo, dijo como que rayos. Es que Así sí, que, bien bonito, pero casi a las 10 salió ya la vida. Y me di cuenta que había un racismo, porque en Guatemala subió videos y compartió fotos sí, de la gente haciendo era, filas como y era bajo los techo. Eso le dije yo, y era mi novia cuando me enseñó eso, yo le dije, ve, ¿y esto qué piensa? Le dije yo, y nosotros nos mojamos todos, y una fotito puso, y la puso nada más los de... Los de la, del estudio, creo. ¿Cómo es que se llama? Este, Noise. Ajá. Ajá. De la, la productora. La productora, esa. ajá. Pero si bien... No me gustó eso, pero ¿quién lo entiende? Pues o sea, al final no, no tiene mucha presencia acá porque no a todos les gusta el indie. Ah, pero bueno. tampoco era para eso porque si volamos mm. estando ahí ¿no? en el, la lluvia. Yo no, ni había comido. Tampoco nosotros. Nosotros de ahí salimos a una chapulte. De verdad, sí. no te creo, y nosotros ahí terminamos. ¿En cuál? En la de Maferrer. Ahí mismo ¿Dónde? fuimos nosotros. No, espérate. Ah. La de Maferrer es la, la misma de, ¿cómo se llama esto? De la, la, de, la de la Jerusalén, ¿no? ¿O sí? No, no. Ah, pues no. Nosotros no, pero entonces la... en la Jerusalén no hay una chapur. ¿O fuiste la de Muti? No, la que está en, ¿cómo se llama esta cosa? ¿En Cascada? 
No, por, 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 por la... Ah, esta colonia, de... por el escalón. Vaya, pero esa es la de la Ferrer. Ah, pues entonces por ahí estaba yo. ¿La que está en segunda ¿Ya? planta? Ah. Sí, ¿a qué hora fuiste? De una nomás salimos, no fuimos por ahí. Y salimos es que... de ahí como a las dos, creo. No, no, una y media. Ajá, como a la una y media no fuimos. No te creo. Sí, Ahí fin. estábamos nosotros. Pero, claro, pero, de... porque estaba una persona como tocando como tipo DJ, un gordito, no Ajá, sé si lo sí, 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 sí. ¿Y a dónde estabas? Y tú no, yo no es el que andaba una camisa negra. Ajá. Ah, pues a la parte de ustedes estuvimos. Ay, sí, serás. <risa> te lo juro, nos estábamos cabal en la, en, hasta la orilla, en la, en la calle. Ajá. Entonces, ajá, no sé si viste, estaba una pareja en la esquina, ¿verdad? Que una muchacha favorita que estaban pidiendo un montón de Bailey. Ah, pues, ajá. los de que estaban en la parte de ellos éramos nosotros. O bueno, ajá, <risa> detrás, digamos. O sea que estuvimos ahí todo el sí. <risa> No manches. Todavía te mandé fotos para que nos encontráramos sí. y no nunca. Qué gala. Bueno, ya va a haber otro concierto. En verano, cuando venga de nuevo. Bye. <risa> Ay, no. You guys are done? Yeah. Okay. So I think I'm going to check on the other group and then maybe we can come back to the to the group because I think that, yeah, we are all um ready to go. Okay. Okie dokie. And for you, Carlita, could be I write a letter for my boss. Yes. The fourth one, my cousin has a red fish. Has a red fish, okay. Mm -hmm. And the other, the, the two more are mine. Do you feel the same way, Lorena? Like saying the name Carla sounds like too strong. Carlita, say I say Carlita. No, uh -huh, no, but then, ah. like, do you feel the same? Because I, yeah. I feel weird when I say Carla. Like my, yeah, my sister, it's not... her, name is, her name is also Carla. And I like, I always was the first one who abandoned, you know, the name Carla. Like I don't even and use when, it. And, my, and she has a beautiful <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Carlita. Sorry. Yes, you were saying, Carlita? Everything is okay, teacher. <laughs> oh, yeah, but it, I don't know. In my case, I just don't like it. I, it sounds like too strong, you know, like it's like an old lady. In my perspective, I see the name Carla. It sounds like someone who's going to yell at me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so yes. I prefer my, my sister's name is Carla Joana, so I prefer to call her Joa. I started calling her Joe, and then people started copying me, like her classmates. Um, because I was actually her English teacher at high school. Um, so I was like, Joe, this, Joe, that. <laughs> and then uh her classmates started calling her Joe. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna call you Joa from now on. Because I don't I don't know, just just I just feel like the name Carla is like too strong. And she has like a very strong character, so it's like even worse, you know. When I, when I call her Carla, it's like only when I'm trying to call her attention. So <laughs> excuse me, the other day I called you Carlita, but it was just you know like a, a thing that I do because I don't feel like the name Carla. Um, I don't feel comfortable using it like that because I feel like it's very strong. But anyway, uh, I'm here to ask you: Are you guys ready? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna go into the into the main um, group now. Then. So here we are again, um, getting all the gang back together. We were working on larger groups because as always, you know, I feel like it's better to have more than two opinions. Instead of you guys getting into arguments, I'd rather have you, you know, with three people so that you feel ashamed of fighting. Anyway, uh, here we are, ready to go ahead and learn more and hear from our classmates, you know, get to... Um, to gather more info, to gather um, more vocabulary. So I will leave it as a volunteering thing. You know, whoever feels ready to share their um, post cognates, you guys can go ahead and, you know, start sharing your information. So who would like to start? What team would like to be the first on sharing um, their post cognates? I would like to. Already then, go ahead. Okay, I found that false connect. The first one was acid. That means ayudar, but in Spanish it 
also meaning uh, assistir, but in English we say attend. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I have cartoon, where it's mean uh, dibujo animal, mm -hmm. or in Spanish, also the meaning uh, like cartoon, but in yeah. English, cartoon, let's say cardboard. cardboard. Uh, also, I have library, that's mean biblioteca. In Spanish, uh, we say libreria, but in English, we say bookstore. Mm -hmm. um, then I have notice. Uh, the meaning is darse cuenta. But in Spanish, sound like noticia. But noticia in English, uh, it's a news. And I have rest. It means descansar. Uh, and sound like restar. But the mean uh, the the word uh, it's mean restar is subtract and the last one that I have is parents parents mean it's padres but sound like parientes but parientes in English uh, it say relatives. All right, very nice. Yeah, those were very very good words because um. Yeah, the one that I find more interesting is the one with rest because I I have heard many people also using the word rest, you know, to talk about subtract because subtract, as I was saying uh, in your team, um, Lorena, I feel like there are some words that sound like very strong, you know, like if they were Russian or German or like something like that because I feel like the word subtract sounds um, complicated to say and very strong. So people will not, you know, want to use it to to talk about something that is as simple as restar in Spanish. So yeah, I it has happened, and I have heard many people making that mistake that um you know they say rest. However, as it always happens in English, there is a, a bypass. You know, there is another word that you can use or another phrase in this case, um, which is take away. You can instead of saying um you know subtract. You can say take away. However, that is not a like formal way of saying it. So if you're reading it on a book or something, you're not gonna read take away. It's always gonna be subtract. However, or I mean, um, if you are like having a conversation, you can of course use the word or the words take away. But yeah, it's it's a very interesting one and it's a a common mistake. The one with library is another one. Uh, many people when they hear about library. They feel like it means libreria. However, library is biblioteca and libreria is bookstore, as you have already said. So yeah, it's it's a nice, you know, it's a nice thing to do, getting to know about the false code mates. How about we hear from another group? Or did you guys have examples, Leslie? Or not really? What? <laughs> do you have examples? Like uh, uh using... the sentence, yeah, uh -huh. I did. Uh the first one is we need rest on Sunday. <laughs> the okay. second one, I saw the news in my lunch today. Mm -hmm. And the third one, on Saturday, I went to the bookstore for a new book. And the fourth, when I was a child, I liked the word cartoon on TV. And the last one, I attend to class today in the evening. All right. Great. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, how about we hear from another group? Uh, maybe Ms. Garcia, can you and your team share what you guys have found? Sure, Melanie is going to read them. Alrighty then. Yeah. Uh, pan de sartén y mm -hmm. pan... De pan. pan. <laughs> uh, el, el ejemplo is I have a golden pan. All right. La segunda is red, el color. Y red de, de las que se usan para pescar. Uh -huh. El ejemplo, I love your red high heels. Okay, very good. The third one, avocado y abogado. The example is the avocado dip is getting rounded. Okay. The for one dine, dinner and dinero. 
The example is Melanie is making dinner for all the members of her family. All right. The, arm, the brazo, y arma. The example is Carlos broke his arm. Okay, so great, very good. I like the example, I mean, the um, the one that you got for um, Avocado because uh, I once had the experience of hearing, you know, an old man say that um, his son was an Avocado and it was, it was funny to some extent. I know it's sad because yeah, the guy didn't really know English. He was trying to explain it to someone else. And um, yeah, he said it like that, you know, my son is an Avocado and I was like, Okay, he tried. I mean, he was trying to change the, the pronunciation to make it sound like it was actually a lawyer, but he didn't know that lawyer was the word he needed to use. So yeah, those are the things that happen. And as I said, you know, it's, it's something that happens a lot. Um, dinner, that's another one that has happened. Um, I either remember that I had some classmates who didn't know that uh, money was the actual word they needed to use. And they, rem they were all the time saying dinner. I need dinner to buy dinner. And I was like, what you know like dinner is like food so why do you need dinner to buy dinner but they were like yeah dinner you know the coins and the bills dinner and i was like that's money so it's not dinner so yeah it's something that happens some of those words are always going to make mess us up and we have to be careful so very good um the one with arm however arm is a word that can actually be used for arms or like the armas like as we say it in spanish but it's not um, used alone. That's the only thing that we need to clarify. Because when you use arm to refer to weapons, uh, because that's the, the regular word we use, weapons, um, we normally say firearms. If you say firearms, they are used, or the meaning is going to be armas de fuego. But if you simply say, I need an arm, that will mean that you need abarazo. So yeah, it's not the same. Um, so, but it can, it can, you know, it's there, there is a circumstance in which the word arm can be used to refer to um, armas, if you say firearm. Already then, how about in your team, Luis? Um, can we get to hear your examples? And so, oh, there we go, yeah. Uh, I, I remember one or two because Lorena wrote the all, all the list, but I remember the first one, like the hippo, the hippo, the the animal hippo, mm -hmm. and hippo in Spanish is uh, hippo. the hippo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then the we we saw the the world data of data. Mm -hmm. We we translate our Spanish like a dato. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the remaining words, maybe Lorena can, okay. can make the support here. <laughs> sure thing, no problem. Already then, Lorena. We, we have yeah. two for each one. I know Capita that you still, to... yeah, I know that you <laughs> yeah. did your work, so yeah, let's go ahead and hear from you guys. Hey, Calita, continue. Uh, yes, teacher. The third one is I wrote a letter to my boss. The word is letter because we can think is letra, letter, but letter is carta. Mm -hmm. And the, the other sentences is like the other group. Uh, we use the word red, uh, like uh, red de pescar. And the sentences is the men have a red fish. Mm -hmm. And the last one. I don't know, Lorena can say it. I have um, sand of, of arena and sandia of a watermelon. Mm -hmm. And when I go to, to the beach, I get a lot of sand of my feet. My mm -hmm. feet. And the letter mine, like meal, uh, uh, all of all of the students, all of the students, English students have a brilliant mind. Mm. In in mine of meal, all of this is mine. Yeah. All right. So mind the mente and mind this this the, the mind the possessive. Yeah. All right. Now one tiny recommendation. I think it will be a ton better with Sandy. 
Yeah, I saw them Sandy too. <laughs> yeah, 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 Sandy. Sandy would sound like so much closer, you know. Yeah, Sand, okay. it, it's on the way. But if you say yeah. Sandy, it's like I can totally hear, you know, the same guy saying that, yeah, he likes okay. Sandy instead of saying that his boss, he, I mean, his son okay. is an avocado. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's two words. It's, it's, uh, it's a game, basically, to um, to navigate this, this words thing sometimes because it's complicated to some extent because there are words in English that sound very, very close to some words that we have in Spanish. But at the end of the day, they simply are on a differently, you know, they mean something completely different. Now, here is another piece of information that I, I wanted to share with you guys. Subordinating conjunctions. When we talk about conjunctions, uh, I think that you already know the meaning for them. And they what they stay for is basically to create a connection between two different phrases. So a conjunction is basically going to work as a bridge. We have already talked about them. We have already heard a little bit about them. And I even expect that you guys already know some of them. But yeah, conjunctions is going to be used or like most of the conjunctions are going to be used for that idea, you know, to establish connections between two different um, thoughts. So the ones that we have here, we're going to start with after. After is relatively simple. We're not going to need to think too much about the meaning for after. You know, it's simply as when you're explaining something, um, that follows like steps, uh, a series of steps. Um, you can simply say, I, uh, what? I took a trip to the Bahamas and after I was left without any money. So, you know, that's uh, like something that connects two different events, something that happened and then something that happens um, later on. Then we have although. Although means something similar to in Spanish saying, aunque, see? Okay. However, this one is used um like um uh, in the middle. Yeah. Although it's normally used in the middle. And uh the way in which you can use it would be something like um I like to eat, eat fish, although I despite the smell that I left over. See, I like to eat fish, although I dislike the, the smell that is left over. Um, let me see if I have the over here because, oh yeah, I do. I do have the, I'm going to jump from here to here. Okay. Just so you follow. I'm going from although to though. All right. Because they are very similar and I love to use this one though. So although, as I said, it's very similar to saying, ah, okay. And you establish a connection between two things. However, though, is not going to be used as to connect into different things though. It works as to explain something, all right? How can we use it? For example, we can say, though it was raining, people still waited for the concert. See, though it was raining, people still waited for the concert. That is as when you use it in the beginning, all right? And uh, it would mean, aunque estaba lloviendo, la gente todavía esperó el concierto. That's, you know, it's a, a spoiler there. So yeah, uh, the other way, it's to put it at the end. Um, for example, even when it rained. Oh, no, 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 no. It rained a lot. But, sorry, sorry, sorry. It rained a lot, but I didn't get wet, though. Yeah, it rained a lot, but I didn't get wet, though. So it's using it at the end. That's a way in which many people in series, in movies, in like day-to-day -day conversations use the word though. What it does is that it changes the whole meaning of the sentence. And this word, I like it because it's tricky. And I like it because it's a, a complication for translators. And as I love, you know, the word, the world of translating, um, it's one of those words that can change the whole meaning of a sentence, but at the end of the sentence. Because when you say though, it basically means aunque. However, it's at the end of the sentence. Therefore, in Spanish, you will have to have said the aunque before, okay? And if it's like a longer conversation, it can mess you up completely. If you, for example, are trying to translate somebody who is saying, um, uh, let's see, it would be a good idea to go to the meeting. We're not going though. There, if you have something like that, if a good idea, it's a good idea to go to the, 
to go to the meeting. We're not going though. Because that though at the end in English sounds very natural and it's very natural. But in Spanish, it will have to have been placed at the beginning. Sí, porque va a significar esa oración, ¿verdad? Se lo repito. It's a good idea to go to the meeting. We're not going though. Eso en español debería haberse traducido como, aunque es una buena idea ir a la reunión, no vamos a ir. Sí. En inglés es una completa oración, o sea, la estructura es completamente diferente. Este do se, se plantea al final simplemente como para darle un mayor énfasis y lo que en muchas ocasiones les he dicho, ponerle un poco de dramatismo, ¿verdad? Al final de la oración. Pero, como les digo, eso para un traductor... Eh, es una complicación grande. Sí, para un intérprete, eso es algo bien complicado, porque digamos que yo ya estoy diciendo, es una buena idea ir, y cuando la persona viene y dice, doy, es como, ah, me tengo que regresar al principio de la oración para explicar nuevamente, aunque es una buena idea ir a la reunión, no vamos a ir. Sí, porque este do le cambia el orden por completo a la estructura de la oración en español, en inglés no, claro que no, pero en español se le da vuelta, ¿verdad?, a la oración por completo. So, ya. Yeah. Be careful with this one. This one is, is very tricky. When it's at the end. When it's at the beginning, no. Because it's, it's basically following the same idea as this one. However, this one is in the middle. The although it's in the middle, the do can be at the beginning or at the end of a sentence. In Spanish, both of them are going to mean aunque. Now, as. This is one that we use um, to establish similarities between two things. Because, for example, um, if we say, um, you speak as fast as a rapper. You know, oh, wait, that's as fast as. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a straight comparison. Um, let's say that um, you speak fast as Eminem. That would be a comparison. You speak fast as Eminem. So it's using as only one time that will establish the comparison. It's very similar to using like. If you use as, it will be very, very similar to using like. So um, if, we use, if we replace the as for like, it will be you speak fast like Eminem. It's basically the same meaning at the end because what you're saying is that, you know, there is a point where those two people have something in common. So, yeah. Um, then we have as if. As if is going to be used to um, to explain or to, 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 to refer to something that is imagine, yeah. <laughs> and something that is part of your imagination, okay? For example, We could say, um, you are eating as if you have been starving for a year. So you are eating as if. It's only something out of the imagination. It's just a comparison, but a comparison that has nothing of reality. It's just something that I'm saying uh, that it's like a pretentious thing. You know, like I'm pretending or you're pretending to do th something that is exaggerated. So as if. Is going to be to express or to explain things that are a little bit exaggerated. Um, for example, if you see a baby crying, um, you can tell them, oh, come on, you're crying as if you have lost your favorite toy. And maybe what happened is just that he bumped on someone or, um, I don't know, he he forgot, you know, to bring something. So as if is when you're going to establish a comparison, but also exaggerate the comparison and also doing it about something that is not like, real you know not about a real event um then we have as long as as long as is of course going to refer to uh something that you know would last for as much as something else um so we will say that uh, um oh the class has long as has lasted as long as i have spoken so yeah as long as is basically referred to that to something that has the same period of time or occupy the same period of time as something else so as long as well um for now basically that's it uh it was great you know to get to hear you guys and uh, share with you some of the false codes that you had for oh yes sorry lorena don't, don't forget to ask for our 1.2 yes please okay yes, i need no the problem. pen <laughs> okay that's okay <laughs> already then uh so uh thank you guys very much for this evening's class and You know, thank you for your participation. I hope you guys are going to be here tomorrow again. And yeah, have a really good evening and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay.